Greetings, everyone. This is something I usually don't do. I thought uh, after building this ship, I needed to show it worldwide because I simply cannot find anybody who has done this before. And um, so, if you're interested, this is going to be a video for my international viewers and it will showcase a ship that I built. I put it into orbit via infinite fuel because it simply doesn't have enough fuel and I can't add any more parts. My PC is already almost crashing when just loading this. I'm currently playing with about 4 frames per second. Uh, funny thing is I realized that turning any graphic options down or something like that absolutely does nothing. So um, you can't improve performance because physics and uh, CPU calculations are, well, they are not that great in Unity Engine and Kerbal Space Program is bound by the limitations of that. So this is going to be the Galactica. If you haven't already read in the title and probably searched on YouTube. Uh, this ship consists of about 1432 parts, um, thus the extreme slow loading. I built it with a nice lander capsule as the bridge and the, well, the typical hangar modules or hangar um, things on the side. <laughs> It has on the rear four, no wait, eight nuclear engines and four aerospike engines evenly spread. So the, I think the, the, the center of thr thrust is almost in the middle. So it flies quite nicely actually with infinite fuel on, but uh, well, the frame rate, well, it's going to get in your way. I got some docking ports on the side. I think I'm going to show them. This is obviously off commentated. And one additional one on the top. Uh, I added some SAS modules to be able to turn it without using RCS or something. And because they look ugly, I converted them into actual turrets. Well, don't work, but. I think it looks quite nice with, nice with the RTGs and um, the docking ports on the side, medium sized small ones in the hangar and one big on the top and one big on the bottom. That's about it and uh, I'm gonna show you in a few minutes or seconds rather how I got this thing into orbit with the infinite fuel hack. And Let's get there. One additional thing I obviously can do is turn the lights on. It's always quite nice, quite nice to have an illuminated hangar if you're trying to dock in the night. Unfortunately, any Viper I built that can actually hold a Kerbal is way too big to get in there. Uh, and that's the inside. I'll be talking about that later. Now let's get to the start. The launch. Well, this launch is sped up about 10 times. Um, luckily, you can see... Well, actually, you, you can see how, how the thing wobbles around. I didn't really notice that with my 4 to 5 frames per second that I had. I was launching during, during the night because it actually increased the performance a little bit. Uh, I think it was because the sun didn't need to bounce off or reflect off something or whatever just uh, enhancing YouTube brightness or video brightness to make it better visible. The launch actually took me about 40 to 50 minutes because the game consistently kept slowing down time. The only way I was able to control this is by using the physics setting uh, here you can see the inside. Um, the physics setting in the, th the settings menu I put the slider all the way to the right. So it basically allocates, uh, I think, less time for 
physics, but uh, on the other hand, slows down time artificially to make the game more responsive. I have, an, I have not really an idea what this slider does, but uh, it works quite nicely, except for the fact that everything takes a whole lot longer. Some beauty shots with lights on here. It's it's nice and quite nice and stable. Maybe because of all the SAS modules, you can see the bottom left corner the gauges, yeah, running around like crazy. And you can see here how much it wobbles around, uh, but it doesn't break. And I was kind of surprised to see that because I didn't really use that many struts just on the uh, parts that make up the interior and um, there, were, there were a few spots where I just had to strut because I couldn't build a full enclosed circle without strutting and expecting it to hold. Well, we're about to leave the atmosphere, everything is going quite smoothly. And here we go. Left the atmosphere. Oh, actually, something I forgot. Uh, on the back, I docked two main sail engines to speed up this uh, lift sequence and actually be able to lift this at all. Because uh, I think the thrust to weight ratio is about 0.4 when in orbit without these engines. And the main sail also only work because, well, infinite fuel. They don't need any fuel tanks and uh, they provide the necessary amount of thrust to get this thing going. I decouple those once I'm ready to burn towards my circularization and 100 kilometers periapsis and there we go, almost circular. I think I'm going to tweak this a little more or didn't I? I think I didn't. Yeah, that's basically the launch. Ah, oh, here <laughs> we go. Circularization. You can see the vessel mass on the side. I think it was something about 280 tons with the few fuel tanks. The only fuel tanks, by the way, are those shrouded by um, the engines on the uh, four corners in the rear section of the ship. If you want to download this craft and use it for yourself, I put a download link in the description below. If you want to make a video of it, that's fine by me, no problem there. It uh, just would be nice if you could mention my name on my YouTube channel or something like that. By, by the way, you can more easily turn or faster, turn this faster with physics time warps on, but you can see here it, it wobbles quite a lot with you if you do that, so very be very, very careful. Now I'm going to send one of my cables out. I'm going to show the inside, because uh, this one's supposed to be functional, except, um, well, <laughs> this is some German annotation that's just saying that Bob is going on EVA. And, well, first EVA, I thought, hey, it's a bit dark in here, so let's turn the lights on. But uh, during some testing phases, I keep losing kerbals when just switching ships with kerbals on EVA. So I thought, hey, let's dock this guy first and then get back out. Now Bill's, Bill is on the job and he's going to show you the, the inside. I basically built with these large um, yeah, construction thingies. I completely forgot how they are named in the game. And they provide stability every few of these plates and uh, well they give a reference to where you can judge some, something and they are basically what holds the ship together. The arms going out to the docking hangers are supposed to be traversable. It's not quite easy to get in there. This is sped up uh, two times, by the way, if you haven't already noticed, so uh, I was taking this, even the spacewalk was taking quite some time because the FPS was horrible. 
And here you can see the docking ports where I thought, May, maybe I can dock a Viper here. Nope, I can't. There's absolutely no way a Viper that can house a Kerbal can dock in this hangar because this hangar is just too small. But if I make the hangar bigger, the Galactica gotta get bigger and well, if I get the Galactica bigger, the FPS is gonna get worse and I think my PC is probably gonna die. So, back on the way in, it's much easier. I think it has to do with this um, panel that's kind of not completely in place here. And, well, you can see I got some additional SAS modules here, some of the new RCS tanks. Um, well, in case you want to turn it a bit more rapidly, you can use RCS, but. Uh, I just think with the current SAA system, if you put enough things on there and you have enough energy generation, RCS is completely useless and uh, at least for turning, it's quite nice for docking, but not for turning. Um, well, that's about it. Nice view from the cocktail pit, by the way, straight towards the sun. And from the inside, well, I think the Galactica Bridge used to be bigger, but, well, as long as they don't improve physics and I don't see me making this one any bigger. Thank you for watching and maybe I'll see you next time.